Hi everyone, it's Don from Don's Family Vacations and this week I'm bringing you a video about 25 things of why I love cruising. A lot of people have wondered and asked me over the course of many years and everything. Uh, as you all know I've had 85, soon to be 86 cruises uh, by the end of the year and a lot of people ask me well how did I get hooked and why a cruise over a resort and something like that and I said uh, well I decided to make a video and tell you why, and I'm going to tell you that right after this. Number one, the first thing I want to bring up is cost. A lot of people, when they look at the prices of cruises, they say it's really expensive. And in a way it is, but you have to include everything that you get when you're on the cruise. First off, you get your stateroom, so your room or your hotel room would be the same thing. But then on top of that, your food is included. All you can eat food is included. Uh, all your activities, all your entertainment, uh, comedy shows, dance clubs, all that is included. Uh, water shows, uh, go-karting, depending on the ships you are, water park right there on the ship, all included in the price of the cruise. And if you start adding that up to the cost of some resorts out there, the resort's going to cost you way more than the cruise will. Number two, what I really like is that almost every cruise ship out there has kids clubs. Some of them are really extravagant, like Disney uh, kids clubs, while others are just basically a room with you know some TVs in it and maybe a couple games in it. Uh, but you can cater your cruise to your child's age. So if you need activities to keep the kids busy, you can book a cruise that you know has good kids clubs and good kids activities. So many parents come back and tell me when they come back from cruises, they had so much time to themselves because the kids wanted to spend almost every minute on board in the kids clubs because they made new friends. There's Star Wars on Disney ships. There's Dr. Seuss and everything. The kids just, a really good kids club can be a godsend when you want to spend time with your kids and you also want to have some alone time when you're out on your vacation. Number three, cruises are great to get to locations that don't have a whole lot to do. For instance, if you're going to Ketchikan, Alaska, can you imagine spending 14 days in Ketchikan, Alaska? First few couple days are gonna be great, but then you're gonna run out of stuff to do because there's only so many times you can go whale watching or only so many times you can go hiking, only so many times you can take a flight up to see the glaciers you're going to get bored, where when you take a cruise, it's going to stop and catch again, and then it's going to move on to the next port, and then the next port, and the next port. So there's always stuff to do. So places like Norway and Alaska, um, even Haiti, you get more of an option than trying to spend the entire time in a very small location, but you still get to see those fantastic locations. Number four, all the comforts of home. When you're at home, you have your TV, you have movies on demand, you have cable, you get all those things on the cruise ships as well. So even when you're in smaller ports or some very poor countries out there, you're out visiting Africa and you're on a cruise ship, it might be a little bit of a culture shock to some people when they go and visit some of these places that they've never been to before. It's always nice you can just come back to the cruise ship and have all the things you're used to having. It's not so much of a culture shock to your system if you're not used to traveling to these locations. So all the comforts of home, another reason to stay on a cruise ship. Number five, this should go without saying, ports of call. How many resorts do you know move around to four different countries in the same week's vacation? Well, cruise lines do that all the time. So you get to visit different cultures, different cities, different ports of call. You can tailor-made your cruise to hit certain ports that you want to visit. 
And that goes for anywhere in the world. There's somewhere in the world you want to go, chances are there's a cruise ship that'll get you there. Number six, entertainment. There's always something going on on the cruise ships. In a resort, some of them have entertainment, like they might have a marachi band during the day for an hour or something like that. At night, they might have a local band play for you know a couple nights in a club if they happen to have a club at that resort. But on a cruise ship, you have murder mysteries, you have bingo, you have gambling, you have comedy shows, you have Broadway shows, you have water shows. There's all kinds of things that goes on on a cruise ship that you could spend the entire week of a cruise on the cruise ship and never get bored. Number seven, besides the entertainment, there's just activities. There are lectures, there are art auctions, there are food demonstrations, culinary classes, there's a library on board. You name it, there's something to do everywhere. So there's lots of activities, not just entertainment. Some ships have walk, rock climbing walls, water parks, flow riders. You never know uh, the new ship coming to the horizon on the Norwegian Cruise Line has a two-story go-kart system on their cruise. So there's so many activities and it, there's basically something for everyone at any age group that'll keep you entertained. Number eight, one of the things a lot of people, once they get into cruising for a while, they start looking for specialty cruises. Cruises that are dedicated to a certain theme. There's rock cruises. There is food and wine cruises. There's ballet. There's jazz. There's country music. Almost anything out there, you can find a cruise tailor-made. Fitness cruises, you name it. There's lecture cruises out there acting cruises out there. There's so many that you can tailor-made your vac vacation and basically have a vacation with a whole bunch of people who are interested in the exact same thing that you're interested in. Try doing that at a resort. Number nine, how expensive it is at a resort to get an ocean view uh, hotel room. Well, guess what? If you have a balcony stateroom on a cruise ship, you have an ocean view every single day of the cruise and it basically doesn't cost a whole lot more than an inside stateroom so but i guarantee you that ocean views hotel room is way more expensive than a hotel further inland number 10 dining options there's cruise ships out there with 30 different restaurants on the ship Everything from sandwiches to pizzas to uh, Taipan Japanese cooking to Italian to Brazilian, you name it, there is something on some of these ships for every flavor and every taste bud in the world, basically. And you can dine in as many different restaurants as you want on a cruise, where a really, really good resort might have four or five restaurants. Number 11, as we've gone through, there's dining options, there's ports of call, there's entertainment, there's activities. So basically, no matter how old you are, there's something for you on a cruise ship, guaranteed something you'll like. Where if you go to, say, uh, a seaside resort in Cozumel, Mexico, basically, you have the ocean and a beach and a pool, and that's your vacation. You can travel, and go and see other places if you're wanting to go down, say, to the Mayan ruins. It's going to take you two and a half hours to get there. But on a cruise ship, the activities are all over the place and there's something for everyone. So wide variety of options, no matter how old you are. Number 12, you can pick the size of ship you want. If you want the large ship, like the Oasis of the Sea with five to 6,000 people on board, and all the different amenities that they have. Or do you want a smaller ship, like a small cruise ship going to Cuba that might only have 600 people on board and you don't feel as crowded? You can tailor made the size of your destination and you're still on a cruise. If you wanna to go to a large Caribbean resort, there's only so many to choose from and the smaller you get, 
the less things there are to do. Number 13, one of my favorite things to do on cruises is book a holiday cruise. Christmas, 4th of July, Halloween. Halloween on a Disney cruise is utterly amazing, even at my age. And so uh, it's, it's fantastic. Can you imagine being on, you know, with uh, all the haunted characters from Disney on that cruise ship at Halloween? Christmas. You go to a resort, they might have a couple Christmas trees up, some lights and some tinsel. The cruise ships decorate the whole ship head to toe for Christmas. And, you know, New Year's, you have fireworks on the ocean with the uh, fireworks reflecting off the water all around the ship and things like that. So holiday cruises, another great reason why cruises are a great vacation. Number 14, one of the other great things about cruises is it's kind of like Disney and Universal. They're always trying to compete for your dollar. They're trying to come up with new rides and new innovations to get you on their product. Cruise lines are no different. One will say, hey, look at us. We got the largest free fall slide, water slide on the ocean. Another one will come up and say, oh yeah? Well, we just built Central Park in the middle of our ship. And somebody else will come and say, oh yeah? We got go-karts going on our ship. Another one will come up, we got a skating ring going into our ship. So they're always trying to outdo each other and that's just benefits to us because there's just more and more and more things to do. You can skydive on cruise ships nowadays. You can surf on cruise ships. You can ice skate on cruise ships. Try finding a resort that has all that. Number 15, one of the things I really like about cruise ship is you get to know the staff especially the staff that you're dealing with every day. Your chambermaid, if you have same time dining, you get to know the waiters and the waiting staff all at the same time um, because they're assigned to your cabin. We're in a hotel, the staff at a hotel might work on floor two tonight and then two days from now, they're gonna work on floor seven. You may never see them again, where here, that stateroom person is doing your stateroom every single day of your cruise. They don't get off the ship. They're there to work on your cruise. And so you get a much more personal service from the staff on a cruise ship than quite often you will at some of the better hotels. Number 16, what I really also like is the fact that you can do as much or as little as you want to do. When I was first cruising and I had young kids and the kids always wanted to go. So my cruises were busy, 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 busy. Now I'm a lot older, I'm single, my kids are grown up. I don't have to hurry to do things anymore. If I just want to lounge around on the ship and read a book, I can just lounge around and read a book. The activities are there, I can do them, I don't have to do them. And if I feel like something, uh, you know, Tonight I'm going to eat at a specialty restaurant. I can just book it and go. Uh, if, oh, tonight I'm going to go see a comedy club. I'm just going to go. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I decided I don't want to go. There's no repercussions. You don't have to pay for those tickets and then you have to try and get them refunded because it's already free. So you can do as much or as little as you want on a cruise ship. Number 17, cruise lines, especially the big cruise lines and the big ships, tend to have some of the most world-class spa facilities you'll find anywhere. And while you might think they're expensive, try pricing this equivalent kind of spa in a Vegas area or out in uh, Fiji or in Rome or in New York City. These spas will cost you more than they will on that cruise line. And some of the views you can get while in the spa and just relaxing out the windows facing the ocean can be breathtaking and I can think of no more relaxing spot than on a sea day relaxing in a spa on the cruise ship. Number 18, a lot of cruise ships on their giant jumbotron screens by the pools and everything will show first run movies. So if it's being introduced in the theater, it's being introduced on the cruise ships. For instance, Disney will run Star Wars the opening week when Star Wars is opening in theaters. So how much does it cost to go see Star Wars nowadays uh, for a family of four? $12 tickets, there's a 
you know, $50 worth there, another $50, $100 worth of popcorn and goodies and drinks. All that is included in the price on the cruise ship. So yeah, more savings, especially if you time it right and see the movie that you wanted to see in theaters out on the ocean. That's amazing. Number 19, your big mobile resort on the water. Almost every single one of them have a water park nowadays, especially all the large ships. So you have a built-in water park at your resort, everywhere you go. Wow. Number 20, one of the great things I really like is when I go on a cruise that's visiting different countries, is that the dining areas will change their cuisine in some of the restaurants to reflect the country and the cuisine that you're going to. Not only that, they will have lectures introducing you to the port that you're heading to. So you have a little bit about the culture that's going there. You don't have to read up on it. You don't have to Google up on it. It's just done. So you're heading into the island of Japan. Well, guess what? They're show, they're, you're getting a lot more Japanese cuisine now on the ship. They have all kinds of cultural events on board and you can even see some entertainment on board from the local areas. You're not going to get that at most resorts. And if you do, it's from the one place you're at. So if you're in Mexico, you're getting some Spanish dancers and stuff like that. Where if you're on a cruise out in Japan, then heading towards Australia or heading over to uh, China, you're going to get the culture from all of those areas. And you're going to see all the different food, all the different lectures, and all the different dance and entertainment that they bring on board. Number 21, every cruise will have some kind of theme night or a theme party. They're going to have 70s night dance party on the beach. They're going to have uh, you know, formal night when you dress up to go to dinner. They're going to have pirate night on some of the ships. There's always something entertaining and it just lets you break away from the mundane of doing something a little different while you're out on the ship. And when you see a pirate night on a cruise ship, there are some amazing outfits that these people bring with them. They have special suitcases just for their pirate night accessories. That's how much people get into some of the theme nights on cruise ships. Number 23, you can choose a cruise line once you find one that you really like. So say you really like Norwegian Cruise Line. Every time you sail with them, you earn perks. And those perks start adding up the more and more you sail with them. It can lead from anything from, you know, free specialty dining to a free shore excursion, terry cloth robes, upgraded bedding, uh, champagne breakfast, uh, almost any, in fact, one cruise, I think Norwegian, as a matter of fact, has, once you reach a certain level, you get a seven day free cruise for two. So I know they offer some of those perks to some resorts. The thing is, Norwegian has ships sailing all over the world. Try and find a Holiday Inn going to Russia. Try and find a Holiday Inn in the Baltic Straits. Try and find a Holiday Inn in Alaska. You see where I'm getting this, where you can sail Norwegian to all those locations and earn resort points for your ship that just get better and better and better the longer you cruise with the same cruise line. Number 24, another great thing about Cruise Line, it is kind of like Disney World, that you get a cruise card and you put your credit card towards that cruise card. And now that cruise card is good for absolutely every single thing you do on the ship. It's good for buying merchandise, it's good for shore excursions, it's good for opening your room. It's a one-stop banking system all over the place. Now, yes, some resorts, still offer this but if you're just going to a hotel and then you're going to go and do something in the city or you're going to go and see a broadway show in the city in new york all that is done differently and you have to basically pay separate this is basically a one-stop banking system on the cruise ships you don't have to carry around your wallet or anything you take your card you put it in a little waterproof lanyard and you're good to go for the rest of the cruise another great thing i like is I kind of mentioned this a little bit before where you can find a theme cruise of some kind. But what I mean by the theme cruise is it's not only about 
uh, food and wine. It's not only about seeing a particular rock concert or something like that. It could be entire communities. Uh, it can be a religious cruise. It can be uh, an LGBT cruise. It can be uh, people looking to get married cruise. It's just, it's not just an entertainment venue. I've seen entire cruises booked out for people who are interested in opening a business. So there's so many different themes that you can find for cruising. It just makes like, why not kind of mix business and pleasure at the same time, if you can. And finally, number 25, one of the great things out there is seeing fireworks on the water when you're over the ocean and nothing is around you but the ocean and you see it reflecting from the sky to the water. It's absolutely beautiful. It's breathtaking. And it used to be kind of like just Disney used to do it. But now more and more and more cruise ships are doing it on every single cruise. They've learned how to fireproof the area that they're doing it on. Uh, that's why a lot of cruise ships used to stay away from that. But they've become so much more sophisticated nowadays. And seeing fireworks in the middle of the ocean with nothing around you but blackness is something that you will remember for a very, very long time to come. So there you have 25 things that I just love about cruising. And it keeps me coming back over and over and over again because yes I can go to some resorts and sit on a beach and maybe head into the city or head on a tour someplace but I'm not going to be able to see four, four countries on that same resort. I'm not going to gain perks for staying at that same resort if I'm trying to find that resort and there is no hotel part of that chain where I'm going. So many different things and so many benefits to being a seasoned cruiser and knowing how to work the cruise system so you get exactly what you want. Once you've done it two or three times, you become an expert at cruising and it becomes so much easier. So never be afraid that first time you go on a cruise and you're nervous, you're learning. Try going to Disney World for the first time and try and see everything on that first day. Good luck, you're not gonna do it. People have been going to Disney World for 10, 20 years and new things still pop up to them. So. Same thing with cruising. The longer you cruise, the easier it is, the more expert you become at it, the perks grow, and you can customize that cruise to exactly what you're looking for in a vacation every single time. So I hope you like this, re this video about why I love cruising and some of the top 25 reasons why you should try cruising. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more cruise tip videos and more vacation videos, Please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.